Hello, my name is Joel, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Share Deck. Today I'm going to be doing another 5-color Commander deck deck, and this time it's for Okagachi, the Vengeful Comet. So, this deck is all about being the Monarch. So what is the Monarch? So the Monarch is... So at the beginning of your end step, you get to draw a card. And whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, its controller becomes the monarch. So you're pretty much like being a king. So there are certain creatures that let you become the monarch. And that's the key of the deck is try to be the king for as long as you possibly can. Gain advantage, gain value over time. Eventually, they'll gang up on you. But hopefully, by the time that comes, you'll incur enough value that... You're pretty much like way ahead of the game and you're pretty much just closing out the game. So the commander, Okagachi, is more of a deterrent than anything. It is a com it is the commander of the deck, but it's not the main focus of the deck. So with Okagachi, whenever you, you deal combat damage to a player, if they attack you the last turn, you get to exile a non-land permanent, which is, which is good. So that kind of deters them from attacking you. So that is... Pretty much the commander, and then let's uh, start off with the deck. Uh, what's included in the deck? So let's we'll start with the cards that let you become the monarch. So this is in in no particular order. So we have protector of the crown. Let me get close here. So we protector of the crown. They have to deal with it with this creature first, so they can become monarch. So we got knights of the black rose. Queen Marchesa, Dawn Glade Regent. So if you are the monarch, all our permanents become has hexproof. Skyline Despot. The same. If you are the monarch, beginning of your upkeep, you get to create a five-five dragon. Custody Leech. So whenever you those, whenever you do become the monarch. Target player sacrifices creatures. So let's say you lost me, you lost being the monarch, and then you gain it back. Then if this creature is in play, then you get to sacrifice. Target player gets to sacrifice on a creature. So which is good, good removal. Court of Ire is a good card. If you're the monarch, deal seven damage to any target, which is good. Arcan of Coronation. Kind of prevents damage, but if you are dealt combat damage, they still become the monarch. So, nevertheless, it's still a big beater. Court of Grace. Produces 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens. If you are the monarch. So, Ember Wild Captain. So, this kind of deters them from attacking you. Not unless they want to get dealt a whole lot of damage not unless they really don't have anything in their hand but yeah it's a it's a good card regal behemoth whenever we're the monarch all our lands tap for double mana quarter bounty so if we have a land in our hand this will ramp us in our upkeep or if we are the monarch we could also put a creature into the battlefield for free which is not bad pretty good Keeper of Keys. This makes our creatures unblock unblockable. So those are the cards that gives us mo being the monarch. Um, makes us monarch. Uh, I don't. I don't put a whole lot of them just for the reason that if we are the monarch, it's very good. It's kind of lose value to it. But if we are not the monarch, if somebody takes the monarch away from us, then they're pretty much like just vanilla creatures. So, so I don't want to stack too much of them into the deck. So, so we're here in the section. Let's get a little bit closer here. Where it kind of deters them from attacking us. So first up is no mercy. So whenever a creature deals damage to us, we get to destroy it. Now let's say it has indestructible propaganda. Ghostly Prison, pretty much the same as Propaganda. Hesperia Supreme Judge. Windborn Muse. It's a ghostly prison on a creature. Sarah of the Sword, 
a very good blocker because it prevents combat damage that being dealt to it. So it's nice. Illusionist Gambit. So if a player is attacking you, you get to redirect their attack to somebody else, which is nice. So if you want to hold on to that monarch being a little bit longer, hopefully this will help you. Come upon. So this pretty much the same as Lucius Gambit. It would prevent damage from an incoming creature, or if somebody deals a huge amount of non-creature damage to you, they'll send it back to them. So. So this is good if you only have like. If you have an attacker that's very big and has trample, so this will be a good answer to it. So Pariah. So I usually put this on my creature that has a high toughness. So if I want to be Monarch for a little bit longer, this will be good. Uh, if I don't have a creature, I could try to put it into an opponent's creature. It'll act as a removal in the worst case. Mandate of Peace. This is pretty much the same as Illusionist Gambit or Comapons. Whereas I don't want them to be attacking me where I might lose Monarch. So I just end the combat step or combat phase. So. Domineering Wheel. So if they have a lot of creatures attacking me, I'll use this card. Hopefully I'll be able to grab a couple of creatures from another player and have them block, which is good. And hopefully, though, a couple of creatures will die in the exchange. Deflecting Palm. Straightforward. Redirects damage from you to another player. Blazing Archon. So creatures can't attack you. Straightforward. Gahiji, the Honored One. So this kind of entices people to attack. Another player other than you because it gives them a power boost. Iron Scale Hydra. So let me get a little bit closer here. So Iron Scale Hydra, it prevents combat damage being dealt to it. At the same note, it can also get bigger too. Slowly get bigger. Selfless Squire prevents damage and it gets bigger. So it could be a win con too if it's if the damage being prevented was big enough. Portal Mage, gonna redirect a creature from attacking you to somewhere else. Orange Chant, so another card that kind of prevents you from being attacked, and hopefully it will give you another round to be in the monitor, and hopefully it will be let you draw into some answers. Sudden Spoiling. It's the same as Orange Chant, so if some, a lot of creatures are coming your way, then make them 0-2, so they'll deal no damage, not unless they, they can pump it. But other than that, that's pretty much the role of the deck. So with this one, Retaliator Griffin. So this is a card that I like, but I can't really find any other deck I could put it in. So I feel like this is a perfect deck for it, so obviously you don't, you, they don't want... My deck is, they don't want me, I don't want them to be attacking me. So having a creature like this that gets bigger for uh, for amount of damage that I will get dealt. So so if they do come uh, attack me and I get damage, if I get damaged, then I can get to do a swing back and do a lot more damage. So Not unless they get to destroy it. Tangle. So this one is uh, Luminarch Ascension. So you have to be careful when you want to play this card. So obviously the focus of the deck is not to get attacked. So getting the four quest counters on it is not too hard if you control the game. But if you play this early enough and you don't you haven't had your defenses set up, then you're going to be number one to be attacked all the time. So just be aware of that. Pick your spots when you want to play this card. Avatar of Slaughter, so this promotes combat, so it doesn't, so just try to close out the game, giving all all creatures double strike and making them attack, 
which is good. So whole, usually I'll play this whenever I have a good control of the game, where I won't be, they won't be, able, they won't be able to attack me, and then, so they'll have to attack somebody else. Good. Eternal Witness, my only uh, graveyard recursion card. Arcan of Justice. So this is another card that I, I can't find a deck for it, and I feel like this is a good fit for it, since it kind of again it kind of deters them from be attacking me. So if this creature dies, I get to exile a permanent. So Seedborn Muse. As you can see, I have a lot of combat tricks, so having my mana untap every untap step of my opponent's untap step, which is good. Avatar of Growth. <laughs> like the other three cards that I was telling you about, I can't find a deck for it, and I feel like this is a good deck uh, fit for it. I don't have a group hug deck, and it seems like it's a good fit. Let's just pretty much just testing it out. Now we're in the ramp section. We'll just breeze through this section real quick. So you got Nature's Lore, Core Cartographer, Far Seek. Get a little bit closer here. Soul Ring, Sakura Tribe Elder, Three Visits, Wayfarer's Bobble, Arcane Signet. We're here at the board wipe section now. So we I'm, I'm using End Hostilities. So if I'm playing a Voltron deck or a deck that uses a lot of swords, then have using this is a, would definitely be a plus. Ether Gale and some removal now. So we got Negate, Remand, Chaos Warp, Counterspell, Ravenous Baboons. So another card that I can't find in a deck for. So this usually is a removal for non basic land. So anybody that's playing. Uh, Cabal Coffers, Gaius Cradle, you name it, the usual suspects. Disdainful Stroke, Source Supply Shares, Path to Exile, and we're here at the land. So I'm not gonna uh, go through all the non basic lands, so I'm just gonna go through the land that is unique to this deck. If you want to see some of the lands that gets transferred to all of my five color decks, you can check out any, anything else, but pretty much it's just a couple of fetch lands, shock lands, a couple of triumphs, and some five color lands. So let's go through the, ba the lands that's unique to this deck. So we got two of each basic land. So we got two forests, two plains, two islands. Two mountain, two swamp, and a throne of the high city. So with that, hope you enjoy my commander deck deck for Okagachi the Vengeful Kami. Um, if you like this content, content please like, share, and subscribe. Alright, thank you for watching. Alright, bye bye.